Hey gents, did you realize that when you talk about a button down shirt, you're referring to the button down collar, not the fact that it has buttons down the shirt? Well, that's why we're talking all about collars today. And collars can really make or break a shirt. If you don't know what you're looking for or what you're signing up for, I've seen way too many mistakes around collars and I think this is going to be a really good guide to help you understand what you're looking for as you're building out a dress shirt collection. I'm also doing this video because I get a lot of questions around made to measure shirts and suits and I ended up creating a page on my site where you can go through and say what type of collar uh, shirt style, where a shirt is made or looking for, and it will flow through all of the options that are out there and show you which made to measure companies you can go to. So if you're looking for a specific price and collar, it can show you that. If you're looking for a specific uh, collar, cuff, and material, it can show you that too. And so I'll link to that below. I'm really excited to launch that because I get a lot of questions around custom shirting and suiting, and I think this website is going to help to answer so many of those questions. So we're going to step through all of the options you'll have as you're looking at shirts and dress collars. We're going to go from the most casual down to the most formal so that you understand as you're trying to build out a dress shirt collection, which collars to keep an eye out for, and specifically what is in style now versus what you should avoid. First collar to speak about is the camp collar. This is going to be your most casual, very widespread collar. You're going to see these on casual linen shirts. You're going to see it on Hawaiian or bowling shirts. And it is not meant to be buttoned at all, worn with a tie. You're supposed to leave it open, show off your chest hair, and only really wear this in warm summer climates. The second one is going to be a band collar. And this is where the collar is essentially missing. You just button it with a, a small band. And this is very, very casual, uh, really not business casual. You can kind of work a blazer into it, but it's not something you'll ever wear with a tie. And it is one of the few you know, button up shirts that works with a collar open or closed. I talked about my chambray band collar shirt in my denim roundup video, and I think it's one of the coolest casual shirts that I have. The next collar as we step up the formality scale is the club collar. The club collar is very uncommon. It's a very distinguished look and it's going to really stand out. It's usually white to contrast the color of the shirt. And it was worn by Eton students to distinguish themselves as members of a club. It's something you're only really going to see with like a very dandy style and it's something you want to avoid with formal suiting. It's really something today that's just like a casual look. Don't wear it for business casual. Next we have a button down collar and you'll see this on twill shirts, not just Oxford cotton button downs, but the button down collar was first made for casual sport clothes and polo players, first sold by Brooks Brothers, and it's buttoned down because it would flare up in the wind. And it's a very much a staple of classic preppy style. And it's definitely a, a casual style that can be dressed up a little bit, but it's not something you can go formal with. I've seen them on formal like twill shirts before, but it really is best with like business casual or more relaxed looks. What I really like are some of the ones where it's like a hidden button, which is what helps to give your collar a lot of structure, but it's not an exterior button and that's an option you'll see in some made to measure companies. Next we have the forward point collar and this is your most traditional. It's a pretty narrow stance between the two points and it's visible even when you're wearing a jacket. It's your basic everyday workhorse shirt and so this can be dressed from business casual to semi-formal. It's going to be good with blazers or suits uh, but this is not something you would wear with a tuxedo. And it's good for you know, leaving it open, leaving the top button undone. You could do neckties, you could do bow ties. I mean, the four point collar is for the most part what you see in most dress shirts. Now you have your pointed collars, but then if you wanna go very extreme, you can go to the cutaway collar. And the cutaway collar emerged in the 30s as a rebellion against you know the very narrow collars of the 20s. It's also known as the Windsor collar and it's made to be wide enough to fit the Windsor knot. I don't think that that looks great. I actually kind of like the look when you do like a really small knot with a cutaway collar and it exposes a little bit of the tie, but this is something that is not for formal wear, but you can definitely go business casual. It's something that's very like bold and sartorially advanced and it can be very versatile, but it doesn't work for everybody and it's definitely not a shirt style that you would wear without a tie. It looks just kind of off. I have a couple of very you know cutaway collars that 
I've worn without a tie and it just looks a little bit odd, but the middle ground between the forward point collar and the cutaway collar is the very modern spread collar. It's something that's a little bit more modern than the forward point collar. It's gonna give you a slightly distinguished look. And there's also no real rule on how far the spread is. It's going to vary by specific brands, but it is something, again, you can do business casual to you know very formal, but not with tuxedos. And it's something too, you can decide if you wanna fill the collar with like a wider tie knot or something uh, like that. So, so far we've covered at least 90, maybe 95% of the collars that anybody is ever going to wear, but the ones you should still be aware of is something of a tab collar. Now a tab collar has been around since collars were invented and removable on these shirts but they can be hard to find these days. Uh, they're often very long and it can look dated. Uh, it fastens like a button down shirt, but the fasteners are hidden. This is slightly different from the shirts that I've seen where they'll have a button under the collar. It's essentially like a modern tab collar. And because the collars are generally larger and longer, this is something for like bigger, taller guys because short guys will look like they're kind of drowning in the shirt. But hey, all trends come back around eventually, so we will see. And the next one we have is the pin collar. The pin collar is very formal, very dressy, and it has a similar look to the tab collar, but it has the pin that goes through to keep it together. And this is something that really signals power. It's like formal business or semi-formal. It's a type of shirt that Robert De Niro's character wears in the movie Limitless when he's playing an extremely powerful, extremely rich man. It's a really good example of clothes that can send the signal that you're trying to if pulled off right. And then our most formal collar is going to be the wing collar. And the wing collar has been worn since the beginning of white tie. It is still the only option for black and white tie events even today. And it's always white. There is no color except for white. And there's also no collar except for two small wings. And it's designed specifically for bow ties. And this is where, you know, I went to a wedding before and I saw a guy wearing a wing collar shirt with a tie, which was really only done in the early 1900s, the 1800s. Like it's so far out of trend or style that it's just wrong today. Wing collars are made for bow ties and they're really only acceptable for black or white tie. It's not something you can wear with a regular suit or anything else. It's something that is extremely formal. So the only reason to buy one of those shirts is if you're buying your own dinner jacket or tuxedo, and then you'd still only have that one wing collar white shirt in your collection, unless you're David Zaritsky or James Bond. So there you have it, gents. Collar styles on dress shirts from casual to formal. If you're looking for something in particular, you know, a, a cuff style with a collar style with maybe a certain type of fabric, I have my website that I built to try and help you find the right shirt and lead you to the right brand. And then I also am trying to collect more reviews on specific made to measure companies because I'm a data point of one, but the more that I can aggregate those reviews and help to give you the best information as far as which brand to shop for, who's getting the best quality, customer service is a huge one and made to measure and I'm trying to be better about collecting that stuff going forward so please check it out please give me your feedback I'd like to get one launched for suits very soon too I've had that in the works as well and until next time gents this is the Cavalier